Okay, welcome to Electron Online, and here's our next example of how to work with partial fractions to integrate. Now notice we have a slightly different problem. No, look at the denominator, we have an x cubed minus 2x. If we factor that denominator, it will look like this. So this would be equal to the integral of 2x plus 4 divided by x times x squared minus 2 dx. Now notice the denominator, we now have a square term in there, we have a quadratic term in the denominator, which means we have to approach it slightly differently when we use the technique of partial fractions. So stay tuned and see how we do that. So first of all, we're going to take what's underneath the integral sign, the integrand, take it over here and write it as 2x plus 4 divided by x times x squared minus 2. And so we can now write that as the sum of two fractions, because we have a, um, a product here of one factor multiplied times another factor. Since this is a quadratic factor, this will become a over x plus bx plus c over this quantity right here, which is x squared minus 2. So it's a little bit different from the ones we did before. We've done before. All right, now we, we have three constants, a, b, and c, which we have to determine, see what they are. From then on, the technique is pretty well the same like we did before. We're going to go ahead and multiply each fraction by what we need to multiply it by to get the denominators to be exactly the same as the denominator over here. We want to write it over a common denominator. So we're going to write this as a divided by x, and we're going to leave a little bit more space, plus bx plus c over x squared minus 2. And again, we're going to write this uh, with a little bit more space. Using a different color, we can now see what are we missing in the denominator here. We have an x, but we don't have an x squared minus 2. So I'm going to multiply this times an x squared minus 2. And of course, I have to do the same with the numerator. Notice now the denominator is exactly the same as over here. It's now a common denominator. And if I cancel this out, I end up back with what I started with. Same for the second fraction. What am I missing here? I'm missing an x. And so I have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by x. If I cancel this out, I get back what I started with. But now both denominators are the same as I have over here, which means I can now write this over a, a simple common denominator. Let me write this in here. So this is 2x plus 4 divided by x times x squared minus 2. And I can then say that 2x plus 4 divided by x times x squared minus 2 is equal to the whole thing over the same common denominator, x times x squared minus 2. And I can go ahead and multiply this out. I have an ax squared minus 2a plus a bx times x is a bx squared plus cx. All right, now to see how this works, I'm going to combine like terms. I have an ax squared and I have a bx squared, so in the numerator I can write a plus b times x squared. Then I have a cx over here, so plus cx, and I have a minus 2a over here, minus 2a. So notice the first term is an, has an x squared in it, the next term has an x in it, and the last term is just simply a constant. I still have to write over a common denominator of x times x squared minus 2. The left side, I have 2x plus 4 divided by x times x squared minus 2. All right, so now I can figure out what a, b, and c are equal to. Notice that I don't have an x squared term on the left side here. I have one on the right side. That means a plus b must equal 0. Otherwise, I can't have the two sides equal to each other. So a plus b is equal to 0. Next, I have a 2x over here and I have a cx over here. So that means that 2 must equal c. And finally, I have a constant 4 here and I have a constant minus 2a, which means 4 must equal to uh, minus 2a. Uh, I should have written it in reverse, but that's okay. We can handle that. Well, first of all, c equals 2, that's already a done deal. We know that c equals 2, and from here, I can write, I can divide both sides by negative 2. I can say that a is therefore equal to negative 2, because 4 divided by negative 2 is indeed negative 2. All right, now I have my c, I have my a. Now I can find out my, what my b is equal to because b is equal to minus a, and since a is equal to minus 2, I can say that b is equal to a minus times a minus 2, or b is equal to a 2. So now I have my b, c is equal to 2, b is equal to 2, a is equal to minus 2. I'm now ready to go ahead and plug those numbers back in here, which means I can now write this equation right here. I can write the integral of 2x 
plus 4 divided by x cubed minus 2x dx can now be written as the integral of the sum of those two. So it would be a over x. And since a is minus 2, I can write this as minus 2 over x dx plus the integral of the second fraction, bx plus c. b is 2, c is 2. That means uh, bx, 2x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 2. Okay, now we end up with these two integrals. The one on the left is easy to integrate. The one on the right, not so easy to integrate. So we probably have to work on this one a little bit more. Uh, but here we can take the minus 2, take it outside the integral sign. So we have a dx over x, which means it's equal to minus 2 times the natural log of x. But on the right side, this one here, the second one, what we can do is write as two separate integrals. So this can be written as the integral of 2x over x squared minus 2 dx plus the integral of 2 over x squared minus 2 dx. And then if you look at this one, this is a nice one because the differential of x squared is 2x dx, so we have the differential in the numerator, so this can simply be written as minus 2 times the natural log of x uh, plus the, um, the natural log of um, x squared minus 2, and of course plus a constant of integration, but we'll leave that to the end, plus the integral of that. Now how do we integrate that? Well, it turns out we probably want to use, again, what we call the partial fractions technique for this one right here. Uh, so one slight difference is, of course, this is not as easy to uh, factor. We can write the x squared minus 2 is actually the difference of two squares if you think of this as being the square of the square root of 2. In other words, we can take this and let me make some room here on this side of the board to work the second part of that. So we're going to take this fraction right here and write it as a sum of two fractions. And we'll do it as follows. We have it as 2 divided by x squared minus 2 can be written as a over x minus the square root of 2 plus b over x plus the square root of 2. So this would be the two factors of the denominator. And now we have to find a and b. In that case, of course, these are not the same a and b that we found over here. These are a new set of a and b's new set of constants that we have to find to simplify this into a form that we can actually integrate. What we do we need to do here is then simply uh, do the same as we did before. We're going to multiply both uh, fractions here by that which will make the denominator the same as we have on the left side because remember this is really the square root of x minus this is equal to x minus square root of 2 plus x plus the square root of 2. So we can write this as a divided by x minus the square root of 2 plus b divided by x plus the square root of 2. Notice I gave myself a little bit more room because what we're going to do, again, using a different color so we can see what we're doing, uh, this times x plus the square root of 2, x plus the square root of 2, and here x minus the square root of 2, and x minus the square root of 2. Again, if we cancel those out, we get back what we started with, but notice this and this is the same denominator as we have over there. So what we can then say is, um, if we multiply out the numerator, so we get 2 divided by x squared minus 2 is equal to ax plus the square root of 2 times a plus bx minus the square root of 2 times b divided by x minus the square root of 2 times x plus the square root of 2. All right, we're almost there. Hang with me. Here we have ax plus bx, but there's no x term in the numerator, which means that a plus b must equal 0. Now we have the constant terms, the square root of 2 times a minus the square root of 2 times b has to equal 2. So the square root of 2 times a minus the square root of 2 times b must equal 2. And from that, we should be able to figure out what a and b is equal to. Of course, from the first equation, we know that a is equal to minus b. We plug that in here. And so we can say that the square root of 2 times, instead of a, we write minus b. Minus the square root of 2 times b is equal to 2. And then, of course, minus the square root of 2, minus the square root of 2, that means minus 2 times the square root of 2 times b is equal to 2. Divide both sides by 2. I get minus the square root of 2 times b equals 1. Or b is equal to minus 1 over the square root of 2. All right. We now have a number for b, 
And since a is equal to minus b, that means a must be equal to the positive 1 over the square root of 2. That now allows us to take this integral right here and write as the sum of two integrals. They are right up here with a and b now being found to be minus 1 over the square root of 2 and plus 1 over the square root of 2. So this cannot be written as plus the integral of uh, a is 1 over the square root of 2 divided by uh, x minus the square root of 2. And that would be times dx plus the integral of, and b is minus the square root of 2, so uh, that would be, well, actually the minus can go in the front here, 1 over the square root of 2 divided by the denominator of x plus the square root of 2 times dx. And now those are easy to integrate. So now we'll end up with, this is equal to minus 2 times the natural log of x plus the natural log of x squared minus 2. And then here this becomes plus 1 over the square root of 2 times the natural log of the denominator of x minus the square root of 2. And here that becomes minus 1 over the square root of 2 times the natural log of x plus the square root of 2 and plus a constant integration. And now we're finally done. Wow, this was a good example actually, if you think about it. So we had our initial problem that we rewrote like this. We factored the, the denominator. We realized that we had a uh, quadratic factor in there, which means we're going to write this as the sum of two fractions. But of course, the second fraction is a quadratic factor. We have to write as bx plus c over that. We found out what a, b, and c are equal to. We plugged those in here. We ended up with two integrals. The first integral was easy to integrate, but the second integral was not. But we separated the two. We have the 2x over the denominator plus 2 over the denominator like this. This is easy to integrate, so we have our second integral. But then this we used again, the partial fractions technique, to come up with two more uh, fractions that we can then integrate separately like that. A lot easier to integrate. And here we finally have our final total integral of our initial problem. And that's how we do that.